home from this shopping trip, I looked up the value of some of the items and I was very pleasantly surprised. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. I'm a Washington realtor who has a love for creating beautiful spaces on a budget. And one of my favorite ways to help do just that is by shopping at the Goodwill outlet or the Goodwill bins where you pay for items by the pound. Today, I'm going to be showing you my most recent trip there. I'm curious if you are able to spot the items of highest value. So once we wrap up that shopping trip, I'll show you what I ended up purchasing. I'll show you what I did with any project pieces I picked up. I'll show you how I might style some of the items. And as always, in the end, I'll share exactly how much I spent. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you enjoy. And here we are at the Goodwill outlet. So they do have normal shopping carts, but I tend to opt for one of these large rolling bins because I know I'm going to fill it up. As I dig through the bins, I try to view things as what they could be and not so much as what they currently are or what their intended use is. This bin was full of boxes of these brand new tumblers. If you're prepping to do a home renovation, sometimes you can find materials at the Goodwill outlet. In my son's room, I took one of these basketball hoops and I detached the hoop part here and made a wood backboard and that is hanging in his room. It looks nice and he's definitely enjoyed it. Occasionally I find items in the bins and I just can't figure out what they are and this was definitely one of those.
I'm headed over to the furniture section. The way our store is set up, we have two separate sides. One side has the bins where you pay by the pound and over here they have items priced individually. When I picked this up, I really didn't know what it was, but I knew I could do something with it. So I decided to chop this in half. And here I'm using some citrus strip to remove the finish. Next, I went over these with my orbital sander to give them a light sanding and get that real raw wood finish that I was going for. Next, I took some E6000 and applied it to the tops. And if you've been following along for a while, you may recall these canisters that I picked up a while back and painted. Next, I picked up this box here and it's intended for holding tea bags and you could definitely use it for that. You can also use it in decor as you would a book so it can be put vertical or you can lay it flat and layer it with other items to add height or visual interest. I 
I think that removing the finish off of wood pieces and exposing that raw wood is a great way to make something feel more high end. When I found this in the bins, it was really dirty. I'm not sure what the story is behind this, but I just brought it home and washed it up with soap and water. I'm going to be cutting up some scrap chalkboard that I picked up several weeks back and putting it on here. And I found this scrap wood out in the garage and I decided to use it to create a border around my chalkboard. Next, I took this jute cord and tied a loop in the end of it. Once that hanging bracket was loose, I just tucked that loop under the bracket and put the screw back in. This large lantern was really pretty. I just removed the candle holder inside and washed it out and it was good to go. And this is something I would group with other baskets and hang on a wall. I picked these two items up and I'm going to be combining them. They just aren't quite my style, so I'm gonna mix it up a bit. First, I am fixing this. That board was falling off, so I'm just taking my nailer here. Just make sure that your nails aren't too long. And I like to do them at an angle to help better hold the board in place. Here I'm using Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. Now that picture is very pretty. Again, it's just not quite my style and it may have made sense to sand this down to get that picture off of there, but I didn't want to sand it for two reasons. First, I didn't want to smooth out the texture on the wood and second, it takes some effort to sand and I just didn't want to do it. So I decided to see if I could just stain over it and cover it. Once that stain had dried, I could still see that picture behind it, so I decided to use a gel stain. If you have never used a gel stain before, it's kind of the consistency of a pudding, and it has really good coverage. It's very, very pigmented. This isn't a color that I would choose, but it's something that we had on hand, so as usual, I'm gonna make do with what I have. I decided to give this a fresh coat of paint. The inside of this is quite rusted and that did not bother me. I didn't do anything to try to remove that because I'm going to be filling this and you won't even see the inside. Once dry, I did try distressing it, but as I started, I saw that original red coming through. So I decided to take some gray paint, put it on my finger and run it along the pattern here. I noticed pretty quickly that that wasn't the best method. So I switched to a paintbrush. My hope is that this will mimic distressing without bringing that red back out.
What caught my eye with this was the shape and the size. It was really cute as is, but I wanted to see if I could make this something that could be used year round. If you spray paint often, I suggest that you pick up one of these little Lazy Susans at the thrift store. It is such a game changer, it helps you to get even coverage and avoid drips. Here I decided to use a satin clear coat. Normally I tend to opt for mattes or flats, but when I know that something is going to be getting touched a lot, I try to go with a higher sheen. That top rim there needed a little bit of touch up. So here I'm just spraying a little bit of that spray paint onto a paper plate. Just remember that spray paint tends to dry pretty quickly. So you'll have to work pretty fast. My initial thought was to do white lettering, but I only had black vinyl on hand. So I decided to do something I've never done before and try to use this like a stencil. Here I'm using a polycrylic to try to create a seal. I then took some chalk paint and dabbed it on. When I pulled this up, I did end up having some paint bleed through. I think I just didn't get it adhered down well enough. But if you guys have done this before and you have any tips, please feel free to share. Here I'm using that same method for touching up the spray paint. Here I'm again going over it with that same clear coat. Next, I picked up this cutting board and I am going to be converting this into a tray. Here I've styled it with some items that I picked up this day at the Goodwill outlet. I'm using some 3M spray adhesive and this is from a table runner. I grabbed this a while back and I've cut it up and used it several times. So you'll want to apply this pretty liberally to your piece. Then just set it in place and smooth it out.
these came with the cork board. Here I'm using metallic gold spray paint. I really like this stuff. It's very high quality and you'll see here how little it took to transform these. I had picked up a couple of candles this day and I also picked up this planter and because it didn't have a hole in the bottom, I thought it would be a good candidate for turning into a candle. I picked this one up a while ago and decided to do the same with it. Here I'm taking a pot that I had also picked up at the outlet a while back and I'm melting down this Pottery Barn candle. I realized pretty quickly that this pot was going to be a little too small for melting down this candle completely. So I just stopped partway through and poured it in and then continued the process. I definitely am not an expert in all of this stuff. I've never melted down candles. I've never made candles. So if you guys have tips, please feel free to share. I ordered these wicks on Amazon and they came with these little applicators and these sticky pieces that go on the bottom to help hold the wick in place. Again, I've never done this before, so I figure I'll share with you what I learned. I learned that you need to run something across your container and tie the wick to that before you pour the hot wax in. For my first attempt at doing this, I'm pretty happy with how this first candle turned out. Unlike the other candle, for some reason this one turned out kind of chunky on top and it had a divot in the middle. I'm not sure what happened there. If you guys know, if you have any advice, please feel free to share. When I spotted this, I could tell this was a genuine antique piece. I didn't know what it was. I looked it up and apparently it has something to do with making sauerkraut, but I thought it would be a really neat decorative piece. I also picked up this faux greenery and this one as well. Next, I picked up this basket. I really liked that it had a hinge lid. I thought that handle was cute and that shape was unique. I picked up this lantern and it had a little solar light in it, but I set it out to charge up for a full day and it lasted for about three seconds before it died. So I don't think that solar light is going to work. So I'm going to have to come up with another plan for this. If you guys have any ideas, please feel free to share. This basket looked brand new to me. It was in great condition and it was originally $35. These dried flowers smelled amazing and the faux florals that I picked up were really nice quality. Again, I liked the size and shape on this basket and here I decided to spray it with this charcoal chalked spray paint. I think this would look really nice on a bathroom counter or on a shelf, or it could even be mounted to a wall and used as a shelf. This would be great for adding just a little extra storage and I really loved the texture on this piece. Next I picked up these cute wooden houses and this one here, I decided to neutralize the color on that roof. I did look this up and I found that Pottery Barn used to sell this little house for $23.99. I 
was hoping to find the match to this candlestick holder. Unfortunately, that is one negative to shopping at the Goodwill outlet is sometimes you just can't find sets. Nonetheless, I thought it was really pretty, so I went ahead and picked it up. I thought these little house ornaments were cute, and these were originally from Crate and Barrel. Next, I picked up these door hanging bells. It looked as though someone had done their own DIY on them. So here I'm just going to do it again to make them a little more my style. The best method I've found for painting round or kind of intricate items that have lots of angles and lots of surfaces is to put them in a box and shake them around as you paint them. Next, I picked up these ornaments. I love the look of beautiful glass ornaments, but realistically, it's just not the best idea for me in this season of life with kids and a pet. So I'm gonna see what I can do to give these a little makeover and see if I can make them look a little more high end. Here I'm using hot glue and once again that jute cord and wrapping it around this ornament. I didn't show this but I did put a light coat of primer on this ornament before I did this just so that bright green color wouldn't come through. Next I took some Elmer's glue and some baking soda and I'm mixing those together and painting them onto these ornaments. What I'm trying to achieve by adding in that baking soda is giving these some texture. Once that glue was applied, I then took some flour and sprinkled it over the ornaments. I then set them aside to dry. Once they had fully dried, I took a dry paintbrush and gently removed the excess flour. Next, I took this matte clear coat and sprayed it over the ornaments. On a few of them, I decided to try cinnamon instead of flour for a different look. If you just want to experiment and try some different things, if they don't turn out great, if you pick things up at the Goodwill outlet, you haven't spent much on it, so it's not much of a loss. 
So I would encourage you to just get creative and see what you end up with. And last, some of the ornaments, I just brushed that flower off and topped them with a coat of paint. And here I have these set in these wooden bowls that I also picked up this day at the outlet. I thought these were a fun find. These are LED hanging lights. And one perk of shopping at the Goodwill outlet is occasionally you find items with working batteries in them. And my favorite find of the day were these Louis 15th style bar stools. When I got home, I went online and I found multiple sold comps and those ran between $500 and $650 per stool. And once again, I wanted to give these a makeover. My first thought with these was to paint them black because I know that they're going to have shoes on them and get a good amount of wear. I thought that black would conceal that. I chose to use this appliance paint because of the durability. Next step was to remove those seats. I assumed that that back piece would detach from the cushion, but unfortunately these were doweled into the seat there. So those were not coming apart. And my husband for several years refinished high-end furniture. He is very experienced in this. So he took this job on for me and did the painting and the reupholstering on this. Once those stools were painted, I didn't like the black on the rings here. So what I decided to do was grab some citrus strip and try stripping the paint with that. And here I'm just spraying them down with some mineral spirits. And as you can see here, this did the job beautifully. Once I had gotten that citrus strip off of those rings, what I decided I wanted to do was try to get rid of that gold or brassy tone on these. So I went online and did a little research and I found that oven cleaner can remove that finish. So I decided to give it a try. Here I've put them into a garbage bag and I'm just saturating them with that oven cleaner and letting them sit. And after about six hours, that finish just came right off. Here's a look back at the before. And here's the after. A big thank you to my husband for all of his hard work in making these over. I think they turned out beautiful. I love painted cane back. I just think it looks so elegant. And this fabric that we picked up for these is from Hobby Lobby. It's not expensive. And I actually have used this on chairs in our kitchen. And we've had three littles using them daily for many years. And I love that I can just spray them down and wash them off.
So that is everything I picked up this day. Before I share exactly how much I spent, if you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Now let's get to those numbers. Over in the furniture section, I spent $4.99 on each of those stools, which brought my pre-tax total to $14.97. Then over where the bins are, I spent spent $66.46. This brings my pre-tax total this day to $81.43. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, I'll have a link down in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me here. I hope that you feel encouraged that you too can create beautiful spaces on a budget. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.